Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we're in San Antonio, Texas at the annual meeting of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Junaid Khan, who is a leading cardiac surgeon at Altabate Summit in Oakland, California. During his extraordinary career, Dr. Khan has performed thousands of heart valve procedures. Dr. Khan, you and I have known each other for over 10 years. It is great to see you again, and thanks for being with us. Adam, I think the service you provide for the community is so outstanding. There's so many patients who come to us who have been inspired by your website and will actually have come to us with questions based on looking through your website. Yeah, well, speaking of questions, we're at this great conference. We're learning a lot, fantastic meetings and presentations, and we have a patient question that just came in for us, Dr. Khan, that is right up your alley given your specialties. This one came in from Erica. She asks, what is the latest opinion on risk versus benefit of watchful waiting for mitral valve repair versus proactive surgery if a patient is asymptomatic but has severe regurgitation? Oh, Erica, that, that is a fantastic question. I will tell you that's probably one of the most common questions I get asked, not only from patients, but from their primary care providers and even from some outside cardiologists. First thing I always tell patients is I don't necessarily believe them when they tell me they're truly asymptomatic. So let's take that group. People's symptoms can be really quite varied. I'll give you an example of a patient I operated on a couple of weeks ago. He used to walk 18 holes of golf. Now he takes a cart. He says he's asymptomatic, but really that's a symptom. Same thing, three sets of tenets versus one. Whatever you want to make it, you really want to be honest with yourself about the symptoms. Now, if you truly are asymptomatic, there is some gold standard studies that were published in the New England Journal that talk about asymptomatic patients. Even today, you have a one in five chance of dying if you're asymptomatic with severe mitral regurgitation. The most important thing you can do is make sure you have a quantitative assessment of your mitral regurgitation. So severe mitral regurgitation means some things to certain people, but if you have a transesophageal echo, the fancy ultrasound where they put a tube down your throat and they can actually quantify it. And in that, there's a very specific number called ERO. If that's greater than 40, I know the survival advantage today in my hands, particularly when we can do it minimally invasively, is much better to have surgery sooner rather than later. For Erica, what would be your recommendation for her? I think, Erica, what you need to do is really define what severe mitral agitation means. If you haven't had a transesophageal echocardiogram, that's the fancy ultrasound where they put a tube down your throat to look. You want to get that, and you want to know what the effective regurgitant orifice, ERO, is. If it's greater than 40, then you should really see a surgeon who can do this minimally invasively for a survival advantage. Well, well, Dr. Khan, I can't thank you enough. Eric, I hope that helped you. I know it helped me. And on behalf of all the patients in our community, Dr. Khan, thanks for everything you're doing at All Debate Summit in Oakland, California. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit parkvalvesurgery.com.